Okay, the video I have been putting off and putting off, but you have asked, so many of you have asked in the last few months, we are gonna talk all thing brows today. We're gonna talk different budgets, what type of color you should get, what product is best for your brow, and should you do microblading or tattoo? Let's discuss all the things, mature brows, and I'm glad you're here. Hi there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Michelle Spieler, an over 25 year professional makeup artist. I worked in the Hollywood industry. I also created Mature Makeup Masterclass, a series of videos on mature technique that you can always go and find the link in description and, and watch the intro video. I think that's the best way to kind of get used to um, what the, the whole masterclass is about. I also discussed on Wednesday night that I trademarked my name, Mature Makeup Masterclass. It's probably the most expensive trademark in history because it was too general. And when I could prove that I had my own brand for two years without anyone contesting it or anyone using it, the judge granted the trademark finally. So it was a very lengthy process. It only takes under a year to get a trademark. It took me over two years and we all did the research and let me tell you, I put a lot of time and money into this name and the research and no one, no one anywhere was using Mature Makeup Masterclass. Nowhere in the last two years, nowhere, no one. This is going back to 2022 when I came up with the name. So if you do see the name and I did catch someone on TikTok using it and they had to take it down, and someone here on YouTube was using it and they took it down as well. I always give people the benefit of the doubt. I think it's kind of a catchy name for mature women. And so maybe subconsciously they use it, not thinking that it's my brand name or that I trademarked it. But in my social media, I have a TM after it. So it is trademarked. So if you do see anyone anywhere using Mature Makeup Masterclass, it would mean the world to me if you could screenshot it and send it to me either you know my my email is just my full name at gmail.com or you could even um, send it in like an instagram or facebook direct message um, it would really mean a lot to me so far i haven't had to get the lawyer involved because all you have to do is type in mature makeup masterclass trademark and instantly my name and, and the date comes up so i have it for life i have it for life and it's a name that um I'm really proud of because I think it does require a lot of master class to really learn how to do our makeup a little bit differently than the younger women. Even women who are 40, we even have to do it a little differently than that, okay? Today we're going to do mature brows, but it requires a pep talk first. One of the reasons I don't like to do brows on video, and you don't see me doing a lot of brows on video, is it takes a lot of time. It really takes a lot of time to do brows. And to me, it's kind of boring, even though I enjoy watching it on other makeup artists, but I don't know, I just feel like it's kind of boring. And so I like to do my brows off camera. Today, I have nothing in my brows and I have no makeup on. I just have skincare. I don't even have SPF on. And I'm, I'm sitting near windows, so this is probably not good. I would lecture you not to do that, but I didn't, I wanted my skin to be totally naked because I like to do brows first. And even yesterday, my friend Neil, he is a professional celebrity makeup artist here in Nashville. We knew each other back in Los Angeles in the 90s. We worked together as makeup artists and he did my brows first before anything else. And I said, that's so interesting because that's what I do. And I see a lot of makeup artists. And I think it's because when we have just plain skin, I think that any type of brow product sticks better to the skin, okay? And you can even take um, a little brush and you could go in and, you know, lightly powder it. Um, sometimes I don't even dip into powder. I just kind of assume there's a little powder left on my powder brush. And so there we go, okay? Um, but I want to say this. Some of you get so down about your brows. Now, thyroid problems can cause brows to fall out. Obviously, we know many medications, chemo, um, just age, just menopause, a lot of things can cause brows to slowly disappear as we age. Not to mention 
Did you pluck your brows off in the 70s, the early 80s? I plucked my brows off pencil thin in the early 80s. I thought my mom was going to have a heart attack. And she liked thin brows, but I went like almost nothing. And then, of course, the next year, Brooke Shields is the big hit. So joke was on me. And then I didn't learn. I, no, I did not learn there. Then in the mid-90s, Friends. Friends was popular. And Courtney Cox had... Again, thin brows, so did Lisa Crudeau, so did Jennifer Aniston, and we all plucked again. And I also blame Kevin Aquan because he started taking all these beautiful supermodels who had thick, gorgeous eyebrows, and he started plucking them like 1920s flapper thin, and so we all followed suit. And so twice now I've plucked all my brows off. I'm so fortunate that I have anything at all. I do use a brow serum every night. You can use castor oil. The problem with these are they will grow hair that's there and strengthen, but it's not going to grow new hair. It's not going to promote new hair growth. So if you are someone who is missing a ton of brow hair, you are going to have to carve out the time each day to put your brows on. And I need you to switch your mindset and let, instead of it being a chore, like, oh, I have to put my brows on. I want you to look forward to it. I want it to be something that sparks joy, that you get to put a brow on, okay? And I need you to really set aside that time, okay? You could do a tinted moisturizer in two seconds. You can do quick mascara, but brows are super important because they frame our eyes. Now, Many, many women end up getting microbladed or they get permanent brows. This can look beautiful the first six months to a year, but as it starts to fade or as the ink starts to change color, because it always does, when you go back in and try to microblade little hair strokes onto feathering ink, because that's what happens, the ink feathers on everyone, young and old, but it feathers more on older skin, um, you're never going to recreate that first beautiful microblading you had. It's always going to kind of look like more of a powder brow, which isn't a bad thing at all. But you need to know that ink changes colors. I know because I had my brows tattooed in, I think it was 2005. My friend Helena grabbed me one day and she's like, oh my gosh, I just learned brow tattoo and I'm like okay so I went over to her house and she did it and um it hurt it did but I loved it because I rolled out of bed and I had brows you know and and she did my eyeliner too which was more painful than my c-section but it looked great until it went away the thing with brow ink is she nailed the color I kind of had hair a little bit warmer than this and I was a little bit lighter and blonder so she went with a warm brow and what happened is within about a year it started tur turning like a pinky red and I even have pictures of myself in the hospital with Gracie um, when I gave birth and I didn't have brow makeup on and my brows were really like reddish pink um, I see 300 to 500 bare face selfies a month that women send me when they want a color match for Saint. And I see a lot of gray brows. I see a lot of blue. I see a lot of green. I see a lot of reddish pink because the inks slowly change color over time. So know that going into it. If you're to the point where you're just like, I'm done drawing brows. I'm done having no brow hair, I'm going to go take the plunge and I'm going to get microbladed or I'm going to get powder brows. It will look absolutely beautiful the first six months, but then you're going to start noticing changes and the ink will change colors and it will require yearly touch-ups, which is fine, but it's never going to look like that very first time and you're never going to be able to get those beautiful little hair marks like you did that very first time. So I just want you to know that going into it. I myself had a microblading appointment a very, very end of 2022. Very, wait, was it 22 or 21? I can't remember, but I had it. I had the appointment and I was so excited because my friend Ashley had just had it done and she doesn't have any eyebrows, so it looked great. 
and I went to her gal and I booked months in advance and you have to pay up front. It was really expensive. And that morning, the girl canceled on me. She had an emergency pet um, visit. Her pet was sick and she canceled on me and I just never rescheduled. And I'm glad I didn't. I really am glad I didn't because it's so much easier for me to change. And plus I changed my hair color. So what if I had done like a a light blonde brow and then now I'm this darker color and I'm going even darker tomorrow. Okay, so we're at 10 minutes and I'm gonna jump into it. Um, I know people get mad when I take too much time. So the first thing I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show you a couple different techniques because then I'm actually gonna take my brow off and show you more techniques. So we're gonna do some different techniques. Now, if you do have brow hair, okay, if you do have brow hair like me, I wish I had more, but I do have some. Now, some of these products brands sent to me and some of it I bought with my own money, so that's why it'll say sponsored, but thick, stick it, no, thick it and stick it. This is a um, colored brow gel, and this is what's great. If you do have brow hair, this is fast and easy. I'm gonna show you how great it looks. And look, this one is ash brown, and then there's one in black. This is especially nice for because women will say, oh, I have a couple gray brow hairs growing in and how do I cover? I don't want to pluck it, you know, because listen, we don't want to pluck what little hair we have. So I always have one white one right there and I have one white one right here. It's buried in there, but I have one white, one white. So it's coming. The gray hairs are coming in the brows. You can always use a tinted brow gel to cover that gray. I, I have another product to show you in a minute too, but what I like about this, this is a color I would have never chosen. It's called Warm Auburn, but because I have some red in my hair and because I'm going even redder tomorrow, um, I, I like this. I tried it before my shower. So you're going to brush your brows into place. And what's nice is that the brush is also touching under the brow hair. So you're kind of filling it in without having to use a pencil. And it's also kind of tinting the brow hair, the color of the formula. Now, if you get messy, it's no big deal. You can just take your finger and kind of wipe some off. But that is the quickest way to do a quick out the door brow. Now, I'm gonna let that dry for a minute because then we can also go in. You could just do that or we can go in and we can do a couple little hatch marks with a brow pen. My other favorite, favorite way to do brows is with the Anastasia brow pencil. It's got the spoolie on one side these uh, retail, I think for about $21, $22, you will have this forever. Whereas a lot of the little nano pens, not only they can break or you just get like maybe this much of a pencil lead, you, you've got a whole pencil here, you know, and you can just get a good sharpener. But this is probably my favorite pencil on the market is the Anastasia Brow Pencil. It's a little bit more than drugstore, but you're gonna have it a long time. And Anastasia makes the best shades of any brand out there, any brand. No one compares to Anastasia. Benefits a close second, but no one compares to Anastasia. So watch what I'm gonna do. So you're gonna start with the front of your brow and you're gonna kind of draw, is this taupe or soft brown? I think I'm using soft brown. You're gonna kind of draw to that under crease or that under um, arch, okay? So I start here, draw a little line to the under arch, okay? Then you're gonna go on the top of the arch and you're gonna come down where the tail is and you can fill the tail in as thick as you want. Then I come to the top of the arch and I kind of draw back this way. Now don't worry if you see lines because we're gonna blend it all. Then I'll go in and wherever I see holes or too much skin showing, I just go up in soft little strokes. 
but you're doing the main shape out here and then you're shaping a little bit under here. Okay, now, that looks, that looks really nice. This is where the magic starts. You take the dry spoolie and you start to brush the brows up. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna lift off some of that darker or excess pencil, leaving a more soft powdery shadow underneath. And look at that, look at how much lighter that is. That is soft brown. I'm gonna tell you, if you see anything called soft brown, it's gonna be warmer. Do you see how warm that is? Soft brown is a warmer brown. So if you have caramel highlights or lowlights or you have blonde in your brown, you want to do the soft brown for warmer hair. If you have cooler hair, you're gonna want something that says ash, ash blonde, ash brown, ash, all that, okay? Taupe, taupe also goes warm. So anything called taupe or soft brown is warm and anything that says ash or natural brown, those tend to be ashier. Real important because if you have cool hair and a warm brow, it's never gonna look quite right. It's so important to get the color right. Same with blonde. Anastasia makes the prettiest blonde brow pencil of anyone on the, the market. Um, Benefit makes a really nice one. Number one or number two can also work for blondes, but the Anastasia Blonde is the prettiest blonde brow pencil of all of them I've tried of anywhere on the market. It's great for blondes. And what I like about it is it's not really warm and it's not really cool. It's just a really nice blonde. If you are warmer than that, you can always do taupe, but taupe's gonna take you warmer, okay? So those are two different looks. This is a pencil and that is just the colored gel, okay? Both look great. Just totally up to you what you decide to do. Now I'm gonna take, ooh, what color is this? The Anastasia Brow Pen. I don't know what color this is, but I'm gonna take a little Anastasia Brow Pen and NYX has one too. I have one right here. Um, let's see. Yeah, I have little brow pens right here. Oh, that's eyeliner. But you get the gist. I do have some. Oh, here it is, NYX brow pen. But they sent black and dark brown, so I don't know if that's gonna work. So what you do now, after you've put in the colored brow gel, anywhere where you see like a little Space, you can go ahead and put in the tiniest little hatch mark, or not a hatch mark, but like a little hair mark. And don't worry, we're gonna brush this up once it dries. So see how I'm just doing little tiny marks? Little tiny hatch marks. You have to kinda, it's a real important to have a magnification mirror for this too. I always use my Ilios because it's the best magnification mirror on the market. The best. They're now at Dillard's, by the way. Dillard's, Neiman Marcus, or you can just buy it direct from their website. And you can always go to my links, too. I have a little code. So see how I did some little hatch marks? That's if you want it to really look... like hair marks close up. Okay. And remember, it'll make it a little darker at first, but then when it dries, you're gonna kind of brush through it. So I'm gonna go now back to my little spoolie. And I'm gonna kinda, very lightly, we don't wanna take off what we just did, but we wanna just lighten it up slightly. Okay, and then I just lightened up some of those brow marks. So you can already see this is this is like an art form. This takes some finessing, but once you get the routine down, 
you're gonna get it down. Once, you, once it's down, it's down, and you'll do it the same way every day. And brows can take five minutes. It's not out the door makeup. Brows is not out the door makeup, but if you put time into your brows, your face is gonna look more polished, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off both these brows and then I'm gonna show you a couple other ways to do brows. Um, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I took off all my brow product and I'm gonna put a little more powder. Okay, you need a stiff angled brush. This is from Sephora. Anastasia makes one as well. Um, this one is Jenny Patinkin, although it's a little wider, but you want brow, brow brushes are very stiff. They're not as bendy and soft as like an eyeliner brush. One thing that I love for women who don't have a lot of brow hair, if they don't feel real comfortable with a pencil, you can buy a pomade. This is also Anastasia and you can take a little bit and you can kind of dab a little extra on the hand but here's what's nice about pomades because even if you don't have noticeable brows you still have brow hair you still know where your brow is supposed to go if you lay the brush flat against your brow and come up So good it creates this shadow under your brow hair and the brush does all the work and you're literally just laying the brush like this and going like that tap off excess and I'm just gonna keep going all the way to the arch. And this creates a really soft, pretty brow. And again, the brush does all the work. Now at the tail, I might use it this way to create little tiny hair strokes. See, little hair strokes. Can you see that? I might create little hair strokes, but that's why it's so important to have a stiff brush. And you literally just put them where you see the hairs growing. Even if you don't have noticeable hairs, you can see the direction of little in invisible hairs if you have a good magnification mirror. You can always emphasize that top arch. You can always go back into places where you think need a little bit more. And then again, I'm gonna take a little bit extra. And I'm gonna draw a couple little hairs. It's gonna take a little bit of practice, but close up, this will look so soft and pretty. Then you can take your dry spoolie, and again, anytime you comb through it, it's going to lighten up even more what you just did. Really soft, really pretty. Look at that, really soft and pretty. I'm using color caramel. It's, I've never used caramel before, but I knew it would be really warm in my brows without being too terribly dark, and I love the color. It's gonna really work even tomorrow when I go redder with my hair, okay? So that is a palmate. That's how you use a palmate. You could also, once you have the palmate in, you could take a brow pen, or you could take these cute little nano pins What's this? Is this blonde taupe? That one's a little too light. 
I love these pencils by Kosas. It's the tiniest brow pencil I've ever seen. Okay, most most brows. Um, like, look, here's an Ilia pen. Do you see the difference? This is a nano brow. It's called Kosas Nano Brow, and I can go in. And it really grabs the skin, which is why it's so nice to do it before you put makeup on. And this, this is medium brown. I bought it because it's the exact same color as my brow hair. My brow hair is on the deeper side because I'm not a natural blonde. And then you can again, just kind of comb over the little strokes you made, okay? But do you see how much work brows are? They're work, okay? We're not gonna, I'm not gonna show you, oh, here's a 30 second brow. Once you get good at it, sure, you could probably start doing a 30 second brow, but it just takes longer. It really does. Now, they also sent me the new Anastasia Brow Freeze, um, but I, I don't wanna put that on in case I wanna take the, well, do I wanna take this off? Maybe I wanna leave this on. I'm gonna do the brow. This is a really good brow gel. So they have the flatter side if you wanna push it down and laminate it, and then they have the taller side to really make them more fluffy. And then look, I just made my brows look even more fluffy. It's excellent and it holds all day. And I've even heard people with real unruly brows say that Anastasia Brow Freeze Gel really holds their brows all day. So, okay, so we've done pencil, we've done the pomade, and I want to show you just using a nano brow. So, let's say you are one of those people that you have a little bit of hair here, but the tail is almost gone. My mom had brow hair like that. So again, you could take um, a nano pencil and you can just start drawing in little tiny hairs. If you don't feel like this, if you don't have like enough control, but see how my pinky's right here? I'm using my cheek to rest my hand. And then just where I see little holes and remember brow hair grows down up here so i'm drawing some little down hatch marks and then it comes out to the side so i'm drawing little brow hairs Okay, and I really like this method too, and I, I use this a lot um, through winter. I did this one a lot, and I really liked how it looked. And then I'll always brush it up, and it's gonna take off any dark excess areas. But see, like I made little hatch marks up there because our hair comes down and then creates the tail. We go up and then the hair comes down, it comes at a diagonal. And that's really, really, I mean, you saw how fast and easy that was. That can be very fast and easy, okay? I love it. All right, now I'm gonna take this brow off and then I'm gonna show you one more way to do a brow, because I want to give you lots of options. But I really think that if you are on a budget, there are some very, very nice drugstore products for brunettes. I just don't always see the same type of colors for blondes. Now, this is super impressive. This Warm Auburn by NYX, gorgeous. And then they also had Let's see, taupe. 
And then this one, did they send me black? Black. But I suppose if you have black hair or you have black roots and then you're growing silver, I suppose you could do that. I personally never use black on anyone unless they are um, African-American or someone maybe Latino that has a really, really dark black brow and usually someone who falls into the winter season. Those are the type of people I might do black on, but I, I can count on one hand how many times I've used black in the brow. I usually use a really, really dark brown instead, okay? All right, I just took that brow off. I'm powdering, and now I'm gonna show you the final way to do a brow. Okay, four years when I worked for MAC Cosmetics in the 90s, we all used eyeshadow in our brow and it looked pretty except when you got in certain light you could see all the little powdery grains sticking to your brows and it almost made them look like little fuzzy caterpillars so i don't always recommend eyeshadow in the brow unless you really know what you're doing but again anastasia makes these little brow shadows which might feel a lot safer for some of you. And this one is taupe, which is great because I can use taupe in my brows. And lots and uh, lots of different companies make a brow shadow. I don't see as many brow shadows in drugstore, but a lot of midstream, like not luxury, but in between, like, like Anastasia, like Benefit. Um, who else makes good brow shadows? I'm not sure because I haven't looked for brow shadows in a long time and Anastasia is always my number one choice. And I'm using the Anastasia brow um, brush because it's, again, it's real stiff. And I'm going to go in and again, you're gonna just kind of use the side of the brush. So you're gonna use the side of the brush to pick it up and then you're going to lay the brush down. Watch this. You wanna make sure the pointy side is going towards the nose and you're gonna lay it there and bring it up. Lay it there and bring it up. Okay, and it's so subtle and so pretty and you really cannot mess it up. And it doesn't even take that long, cause watch, we're just gonna go. I usually do about two strokes and then I go back to the pot And then I might take it now and just put in a couple little brush strokes. Now it's not gonna be like a pomade, it's not gonna create a hair, but it will create a kind of a powdery area where more hair should be, but I've lost it. And then you can go up to the tail. The nice thing about shadows, brow shadows, is they're soft and forgiving. So if you feel like maybe you're a little clunky or clumsy with a brush, this is a great way to do it. And it's very powdery and soft. So if you get close up to people, they're not gonna see a ton of makeup in your eyebrow. It's gonna just look like a pretty powdery shadow. So see that, do you see how that's a little bit more powdery? Let me see, I'm gonna go up here a little bit. Yesterday when Neil did my brows, he went up a little bit higher on this side because this side I have a higher arch and it just looked so pretty. And no one was looking at me going, oh, I see more powder here than here. It, 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 you're the only one that sees that. People don't see that unless it's really, really, really obvious. But people don't really see that because you have to remember, our left brain is always the shortcut. Our left brain wants to turn everything into a shortcut. So the left brain is just gonna go, oh, two eyebrows. It's not gonna go in there like a right brain and go, oh, well, it's a little higher on this side than that. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. Then you're gonna take this and you're going to brush it up and into place and again, it's gonna take off any excess so you don't feel like it's too much. And then look how soft and pretty that is. Very soft and pretty. Then if you want, you could always go in with a nano pencil. 
little nano pencil and I could create a couple little hair strokes and I could create a couple little hair strokes if I wanted, a couple little ones. And it creates a little tiny bit of dimension because you're putting a slightly darker pencil over that lighter powder, okay? And again, Anastasia makes every shade you can think. And what I like about this is this is called taupe, but it's almost like a blonde in a taupe. A blonde and a taupe so you kind of get a couple different like sometimes when I was lighter blonde this would go into my bushier area and then the deeper color would go out here okay and then you can brush it as much as you want okay both look so good actually now I feel like I need to Ooh, that brow gel is really sticking nicely That is a good brow gel. But I'm looking in the mirror and can I get away with these in public? I think I can. I might have a little more warmth right here, but I feel like I could get away with this in public and no one would think I had two different eyebrows. Yeah, I think I can get away with that. So you see what I mean? We're our own worst critics, but I like how that looks. This might have a little more warmth because it's the caramel pomade and then this is the taupe shadow and then I'm going to tell you some of my favorite drugstore products in a minute and some of them I couldn't find I've looked everywhere okay so there we go love it love love this gel by Anastasia, love it. I also love Kosas. Kosas makes a great clear brow gel that has little invisible fibers in it, so it helps bulk up your brow, and I love that one too. Now, NYX makes great products. And remember, if you buy it at Ulta or Walgreens and something doesn't work, you can take it back. I take back stuff all the time. I just save my receipts. But I like the, the Thick it and stick it, and I really like this warm auburn. You're gonna see me probably using this a lot more, especially because I'm going redder tomorrow. Um, I like the NYX pencils. I have, look at my little spindle of pencils here. NYX, right here. What color is this? Taupe. No, amber. Oh, this is a great pencil. I love that. I picked that up. Um, here's Maybelline. Okay, Maybelline Express Brows was my first brow pencil in the drugstore where I was like, wow, I love this. Now their blonde isn't the best blonde, try it and see, but their taupe, their soft brown, what's this one? This is medium brown. And again, because it I have darker brow hair, it matches my brow hair. Love Maybelline. Um, I bought the Revlon one, I liked it. I bought the one from Ulta Beauty brand. Where's that one? Mm, Ilia, they're okay. I don't love the Ilia ones. Um, well, somewhere in here I have the Ulta. Oh, here's the Maybelline in blonde. And it's it's it wasn't bad. I mixed it with the darker one. Sometimes you have to go with two shades. Here's the Anastasia mini pencil, but nothing is tinier than the Kosas Nano, nothing. The Kosas Nano is the tight, the tiniest. Um, I really, really like brow pens, okay? I like brow pens, but they can be dark and inky, so that would be someone who's really into that fine art of brush strokes. Otherwise, I don't recommend it. Um, oh, and then, you know, Benefit makes this, where you can go, here, I'm gonna show you. This makes sure... Anastasia makes one too, but you can go like right, go right under the brow and it creates this like perfect little arch because it's a slightly pearly, 
flesh pencil. Of course, I did this also with the Ulta under eye brightener. Um, I did the Ulta makeup last week on my YouTube, and then I also did a quick Instagram because I was so impressed. And then sometimes I like to take this on the inside of my eyes too and give that cute little, but that's nice under the brows. See how it really popped the brow because it's kind of popping the brow bone. Those are fun little tricks. Um, I don't know where my e.l.f. pencil is, but you remember when I did the e.l.f. video in January, I loved the e.l.f. brow pen and I cannot find it, or pencil, I can't find it anywhere. I loved e.l.f. I was impressed with e.l.f. I was impressed with, I got. I did get a L'Oreal. I got a Revlon. I'm telling you, drugstore is catching up and most of you are not surprised by any of that because you are, kind of, so a lot of you are here because of, the drugstore that I've been doing because I'm I love it I'm so impressed with drugstore anyway I'm just looking through here right now and oh is this here's the Ulta I liked it I think it was four bucks okay so elf makes great pencils really I just about anyone now in the drugstore makes great pencils I just don't always love it for blondes but if you are brunette if you are a deeper blonde with warmth in your hair if you have silver hair, you can go like um, ash, you can go dark brown. I just don't know that I recommend black for many people, even if they had black hair or even if they have black hair now, I always go a little bit lighter because anything you put in the brow is gonna instantly look darker anyway. I mean, look at how light Look how light that is. Would you ever think that would be in my brow? So anything you put in the brow instantly looks darker. So I do t I do tend to stay away from black unless I said like someone is ethnic, deeper skin, and that black looks really good. And then I might just do black more in the tail and kind of do a darker brown here just to lighten the brow up. Um, I've seen gray pencils. I think Anastasia makes a gray pencil for my gals who are silver sisters. But the rule of thumb is you would kind of always, even if you're silver, you would kind of always follow the brow you followed when you had your prepubescent hair color. So whatever hair color you had, whatever your virgin color is, you would probably stick to that brow even if you were silver, unless you were a redhead. Obviously a silver goddess, and Anne Margaret, is not going to still do a red brow when she's silver, right? But you get the gist of it, okay? So I hope I've given you a lot of fun different techniques and I want you to practice. I want you to practice, practice, practice. Anything in life is worth practicing, okay? Um, you weren't great at gardening from the get-go, were you? I mean, I still kind of have a black thumb, but I remember when I really was getting into it, you learn as you go along, you make mistakes and you learn not to repeat them. My husband, he loves making Sunday stew every week and it's a recipe by Pioneer Woman. I've talked about it before. It's her Sunday stew. It is my favorite dish in the world. It is so savory. He's been making it. And every week he screws up one element. It's still good, but like the first week he did double broth. So it was soupy. It was a soupy stew. And then last week he didn't put enough broth in it. So the vegetables were still crunchy. So he's learning, but he loves it. And he's practicing. And when he makes a mistake, now he knows not to repeat that going forward. Everything in life that we want to get good at requires practice. And that includes eyebrows. So Let's not be lazy. Let's put the time and attention into the eyebrows because we can easily throw on a mascara. We can easily throw on a skin tint. We can do a quick little blush. We can throw a lipstick on in the car. Brows are something you cannot rush. You just can't. Some of you can, but that you're not you're not here. I'm not here for you today. I'm here for the women who are really struggling with mature brows, okay? Last thing I wanted to show you Oh, Rob's out working walking Tate right now. This is Color Wow, okay? And this is phenomenal because it was created for roots, okay? So I want you to watch this. Like, see how I have a little silver right here? So I'm gonna take this, and what color did I get? I got dark blonde, 
but they have one color up from this is soft brown. I'm gonna get this next, but watch this, okay? It goes in and it completely covers the silver hair growing in, okay? So you get the gist, okay? It really does cover and it really sticks to the hair. A lot of people say, oh, I just use eyeshadow. Eyeshadow doesn't stick to the hair. This was actually created to grab the hair and stick to it. So guess what else it sticks to? Gray hair. So I could take a little bit with my, not, not using the brush they gave you, but using your brow brush that you're gonna get at Sephora or Anastasia. And I see my little gray hair right here. And I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna cover it and now it's covered. And some people use this for eyebrows. So you could even get Color Wow. And it comes in a ton of shades because it's meant for hair. Um, and then look, I've got this, woo, this is a really gray hair right here. This one's really thick and noticeable. So I'm just gonna go over it. And it really coats, it really coats that gray hair. And when I tell you this can last you forever, especially if you're just using it to coat those hairs, this can last you forever. But this comes in a lot of shades. It's meant to mimic hair color. And so think about it, whatever you would touch up your roots with would be gorgeous in your brows and it covers gray hair. It's gonna coat those little white or gray hairs and stick to it all day. So that's what I wanna leave you with, Color Wow. I don't even remember how much this was, but I know that I'm going a little darker and redder tomorrow, and this blonde, dark blonde, I think isn't gonna work. But you can see, look, I'm a little silver here, and then here I just put all that in, and it's really, oh yeah, it really sticks to the silver. I just think I need to go a little bit darker, okay? Color Wow, you'll have it forever forever. It's an investment at first and then you'll have it forever. You could get this Sephora brush. This is the, um, I don't know what it's called. Thanks, Jen. Brow. Oh, okay. That's profound. It's Sephora brow. I don't know how much it is. I bet it's five to 10 bucks. Amazing. Anastasia makes one too. It's phenomenal. Jenny Patinkin, everyone does. Everyone makes a good brow brush, okay? I hope that helps. I really hope it helps. I want you to practice. I want you to come back and tell me how it's working out. I would love to hear what you use. Maybe you use something that I didn't even use today and you're excited to share it with the audience. Listen, just because I'm a 25 year pro and I have like 40 or 50 brands in this studio doesn't mean I know everything out there. My sister loves Wonder Brow. She loves it. She wore Wonder Brow to Hawaii many years ago and her brows stayed on all week through the splashing in the sea and the swimming in the, uh, the pool. So some of you might love Wonder Brow or some of you might love those stencils where you, you know, pack it on. And I've, I've done those before and I don't love that for me, but I, I've seen it work great on other women. So let us know in comments what you love for brows because it helps everyone out. I'm not just here for me. I'm here for everyone and you're here for everyone because this is the Look Good Close-Up Club. So share your tips and tricks. Just because I'm, I'm an expert doesn't mean I know it all. I readily admit that. I don't know it all. And I love learning from you. I love it. I love it. And you guys give me some of my best ideas. I wasn't going to do a brow video until so many people asked in the last couple weeks. I'm like, all right, I got to give the people what they want. I got to give my sweet girls what they want because they want to look cute. They want to have cute brows and I get it. So I'm going to do this. Anyway, I'm so glad you're here. We see you. We all see each other. And if you can just wake up and, and learn to put your brows on and feel a little bit cuter in your day, feel a little bit more sassy, isn't it worth the time investing in yourself? I think it is. I love the video, uh, the 
photos I get from you. I love the testimonies I get from you that you feel cute or that someone commented on your brows because we go out and we're so invisible, right? I mean, I go out with my daughter and she gets free drinks at the drive through because she's so young and pretty. No one's looking at me anymore. So it's fun when someone does take notice of you or something that you're wearing. That's what I live for. I live for your testimonies. I love hearing that you're feeling cute. I love hearing that your boyfriend or girlfriend or spouse has noticed a difference or your best friend is asking you what you do differently. That's fun. That gives us motivation to keep on keeping on because we're not going out down without a fight here at the Look Good Close Up Club, are we? I love you. I'll see you next week. Thanks for being here.